It's 6 p.m. Thanks for watching NBC 10, home of the live storm tracker Doppler radar and local news that impacts you. And now, your Billy Wood Honda forecast first. Clusters of showers and thunderstorms making their way through southeastern Arkansas. One of those storms even prompting a severe thunderstorm warning in the last hour, hour and a half or so. Most of this generally stays non severe, already kind of on a weakening trend as it becomes a little more disorganized as the sun starts to set. But it is the precursor of um, changes in store that continue through the day tomorrow. Showers and storms continue tonight. They'll wrap up overnight and then clearing skies and noticeably cooler tomorrow with daytime highs in the mid to upper 40s. That's your forecast first. NBC 10 News at 6 starts now. Live from the NBC 10 Broadcast Center, this is your Arklamis News Source. Voted Best Newscast and Best Weather by the Louisiana Association of Broadcasters. This is NBC 10 News, live at 6. Thank you for joining us for your Arklamis News Source. I'm Kyla Scott. Our top story at 6, Governor Jeff Landry has declared a state of emergency in Louisiana due to a lack of police officers. The Louisiana Sheriff's Association estimates that Louisiana Sheriff's offices are down approximately 1,800 deputies statewide, resulting in record low employment and an increase in response time. Today's announcement comes just three days before a special legislative session is set to begin to address the statewide crime problem. On to a news update at this hour. According to the advocate, former LSU running back Trey Holly will plead not guilty to all three of his charges. Holly and two others have been arrested in connection with a shooting at a Union Parish apartment complex. He's facing charges of attempted second degree murder, aggravated criminal damage to property, and illegal use of a weapon. Holly allegedly told his attorneys, quote, that he did not do this. We'll continue to keep you updated on this case on air and on my Arklamist. Com. Well, a big cat has arrived at the Louisiana Purchase Gardens and Zoo. NBC 10's Jaden Maloney visited there today and joins us live in the studio. Jaden? Well, that's right, Kyla. Today I visited the Louisiana Purchase Gardens and Zoo in Monroe to meet their new tiger that they just welcomed. And she has no doubt become very popular. So we have a brand new tiger here at Louisiana Purchase Gardens and Zoo. Her name is Malia, and we actually brought her in probably a month ago. Uh, she came from Reno, Nevada at a zoological park there, and we were looking for a tiger because our tiger, uh, Timmy, passed away several months ago, so the zoo needed a new ambassador animal to represent tigers. Malia is an eight-year-old Bengal tiger, and they are originally from Asia. The team at Louisiana Purchase Gardens and Zoo traveled to Reno to bring her to North Louisiana so she could become used to her exhibit. Tigers, uh, as you know, do love to swim, and we're actually hoping that she is going to hit the pool this summer after she gets used to this exhibit. But tigers, just in general, especially Bengals, uh, can weigh anywhere from 300 to 500 pounds, and they have the longest canines out of any of the tigers. Malia officially made her grand appearance on February If you 10th, want to come visit Malia hopefully. yourself, the zoo is open seven days a week from 10 to 5 p.m. As always, for more information, you can head on over to our website at myarklamist.com. Reporting live in the studio for your Arklamis news source, I'm Jaden Maloney. All right, thank you so much, Jaden. In other news, the 56,000 square foot Amazon distribution facility in Monroe construction now underway. In addition to the facility, locals can look forward to the growth within the parish and more job opportunities for residents. It will be located at the intersection of Luffy Drive and I-20 North Frontage Road. Well, when continuing to honor Black History Month at KTBE, and when we return, we'll meet a man who is trying to make a difference in Louisiana in the education system. Stay with us. We have a few showers and thunderstorms, <clears throat> excuse me, mainly across southern Arkansas. In most locations, we'll continue to see the threat for rain over the next few hours. Aside from that, a chilly weekend and a windy one ahead as well. A full look at the forecast as NBC 10 News at 6 continues. Black History, sponsored by Creed and Creed, your local injury attorneys. Well, this February, we're honoring black history by sharing the stories of others. Bill Wood tells us about a man who's on a mission to make a difference in every Louisiana classroom. 
everything that we have coming. Like a teacher at the head of the class, the guy with the B on his head is Larry Irvin. More about the B in a moment. I think we're going to be really redefining um, education as a whole. For now, Larry and his New Orleans team are learning a real life lesson. Among public school teachers, black men make up barely 1%. That is a staggering statistic. Staggering. The lack of representation in classrooms creates a subliminal message for all kids. Black men can't and don't leave from an intellectual capacity. If you don't want seafood, you can go with the lamb chops. The solution is being served up down the street with men like 25-year-old Kobe Lofton, now waiting tables, but just waiting to become a teacher. Uh, so actually, my dreams are even bigger than that. Um, my goal is to open my own school uh, and also develop my own curriculum. The world is your classroom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like 200 teachers since 2014 from New Orleans to Baton Rouge, Kobe travels from where he is to teaching through a Louisiana program started by the guy with the B, which stands for Brothers 19. Empowered to Teach. We start to peel back the layers of that, of that greatness and that, and that, and that genius uh, once they come to our program. Larry Irvin was not always a straight-A student. He did drugs. He got arrested twice. He once got in a high-speed chase with the cops before he arrived right here. And I think what my story is really showing is that you can fail as a black man, get an opportunity to correct. If given the opportunity, you can correct and really go on and do great things. Sounds like the smartest kid in the class is you. I wasn't called that in school, but uh, it's looking like that now, right? The gospel, according to Larry, is kids become what they see. Now they see a teacher. Every time they see the bee. Well, the University of Louisiana at Monroe is hosting a Black History Month program next Friday. The program is titled, quote, A Black History Program, African Americans and the Arts, end quote. International Student Services and Multicultural Affairs Director Gina White says this is a time to reflect on the past, gain momentum in the present, and set goals for the future as a campus community. The program will kick off at 10 a.m. at Bayou Point Event Center. It's free to the public. Well, Chief, uh, temperatures gonna do something later. They're about to make a quick tumble, and uh, it'll be noticeably cooler across the area this weekend. May deal with some rain first. Full look at the forecast coming up next. Live Storm Tracker Doppler radar, sponsored by Homeland Bank. And now, exclusive Storm Tracker Doppler weather from the most experienced meteorologist in the Arklamis, Jared Floyd. We have some rainfall across southeastern Arkansas. Most of this in the form of just some scattered showers and storms as you take a look at the live Storm Tracker Doppler radar. We did have one severe thunderstorm warning earlier for portions far northwestern reaches of Drew County, and uh, that storm or whatever's left over of it still moving through the northern sections of the county. At one point it had what we call the tornado tag and basically that's a, a, a extension that's added to a severe thunderstorm warning that tells you that the storm is rotating and a tornado is not completely out of the question. Now generally speaking the severe threat including the tornado threat is quite low and most of those storms already kind of losing whatever oomph and instability they had to work with. As the sun sets the atmosphere cools and stabilizes and as a lot of those storms kind of move farther away from the boundary, they're becoming much more disorganized and, and that trend will likely continue over the next several hours. Low to mid 60s, some areas still holding near 70, including Camden and uh, dew points in the upper 50s to low 60s, but some big changes in store behind this front as we go through the upcoming weekend. So the showers and thunderstorms continue along the boundary itself, which is making some pretty decent progress off to our north. We'll continue to press off to the south and east tonight with clearing skies through the day tomorrow. You will likely wake up up to clouds, 30s, and a 20 mile an hour northerly wind tomorrow. So please prepare accordingly. It'll be a very, very big start change uh, to where we were over the last couple of days. But if you've enjoyed the spring like temperatures, they're quick to return next week. So the boundary moves off to the south. Again, last of the rain wraps up tonight. Skies will clear from north to south tomorrow. And again, these bolder yellow lines indicating some stronger northerly winds through the day. 
Those winds should subside somewhat tomorrow night. Clear skies through the daytime hours on Saturday. Winds not as much of a factor through the day, but expect quite a bit of sunshine. And then beyond that, winds return to the southwest or south as we go through the early parts of the week and temperatures climb quickly according uh, to what we expect uh, going into the next seven to 10 days. Lows tonight, mid to upper 30s. It will be a chilly night across the area. Eventually, uh, we have to deal with the rain first and we'll probably spend much of the next several hours in the 50s and 60s. But again, through the overnight time frame, I would expect between about 2 a.m. and sunrise is when temperatures really start to fall off in most locations. It'll be a windy Saturday across the area with daytime highs in the low to mid 40s, uh, maybe the upper 40s if we're lucky and we get a little bit more sunshine. Winds will stay out of the north 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusts to 25 or 30 miles per hour, not out of the question starting later tonight and continuing through the day on Saturday. Look at the seven day forecast and again we've got some changes in store. Uh, well, we've got a lot of stuff going on because it, we, we just kind of hit the seesaw over the next couple of days. We go from the 70s today to the 40s tomorrow and then the 20s overnight into Sunday morning. Then the warming trend is on. We'll probably still be below freezing on Monday morning and then 60s and 70s as we go into next week. Daytime highs uh, well above normal for this time of year with morning lows in the low to mid 50s. Week front on Thursday could bring some breezy conditions, maybe a few spotty showers, but nothing uh, that can't be managed across the region. And then uh, a little bit of a step backward by the middle parts of next week. This little early taste of sp spring, I, I'm not going to take credit for this thought. Uh, meteorologist Alex Noel gets uh, credit for this, but this early taste of spring in 70s next week, pollen. You see how the smile? <laughs> I, I can see it on the preview <laughs> monitor. Your face just went, mm. <laughs> but it's something to keep in mind next week. All right, thanks, Alex, and thank you, Chief. You <laughs> well, coming up after the break, girls basketball playoffs tipped off Thursday night with a couple area teams looking to advance to the second round. Our sports team will have. And now, your Wachita Valley Federal Credit Union Sports Desk. Welcome into the Hoop House, everyone. We've gotten past the district tournament and the regular season finale for the boys, but now for the girls. Jess, I think you know what time it is now. I don't think they know what time it is. Playoffs? Yes, we're talking about the playoffs. It's the playoffs already. It seems like the season just started, and now it's win or go home for girls basketball. And I don't know about Jesse or Jeremy, but I live for the hardwood drama, those buzzer beaters, those nail-biting moments when everyone's intensity is, is dialed up. There's nothing like it especially around this time of the season. You got that right. Talking about this time of season. Take things over to Richwood Rams. Host of the Voice Lady Mustangs for the first round action at the Woodshed down 165 South. Jamie Hunter gets the steal, goes coast to coast, and gets the lay-in to fall in and one counted the foul. Now, Bronette comes right back and gets the three. It's nothing but net from behind the arc. Chisley on the miss. She on the fast break. She missed the layup, but Carter says it's the playoffs. And I got your back. She is right there for the putback. Five seconds left in the first quarter. Ritual up by nine. Chisley responds after the missed layup, and it's nothing but bottoms after to end the quarter. Now, later in the second quarter, later rounds trying to add to the score. They would do just that when the prayer is answered and it falls in. Hunter with the offensive board gets a weight up and gets the shot to go in. A few plays later, later rounds on the move. Sanders, a little contact from the defender, but no worries. It's all good. She has two. Hunter on the hunt says, excuse me, I got reservations for two and also the second round of the playoff. Richwood, they go on to win 44 to 30 and they would advance to the second round. Here's Jamie Hunter after the win. Great. I'm just a sophomore and start for a varsity team, so as a freshman, I had to pick up on a lot of stuff, a lot of pressure, so it's really fun. I'm happy we won our first round because last year we sadly lost by one to Port Allen, so it's just a great opportunity. All right, congrats to Richwood. Let's head over to Ruston where the Lady Bearcats took on the West Monroe Lady Rebels. Ball movement starting early by the Rebels until it ends in the hands of Ella Ashcraft. Left all alone as she splashes one home from deep. Zakia Jackson put the moves on the defense on her way to the basket, gets it to go and collects a foul in the process for the and one. Ashcraft got the pop tart to come out the tolter and decided to drive the lane for the deuce. Jalea McWain took over in the first half with 16 points. She took this one from the East Coast to the West Coast, put it in park in the mid range for the pull up J. Jackson this time being a menace on the defense with the steal. Say cha cha real smooth with the crossover. Gets all the way to the bucket for the fast break lay of McWayne on the drive in the lane. Goes over two defenders, drops in a bucket, and there 
there goes the whistle. Collects the double damage. Here she is again in the corner. She had 20 points and five steals. Just an all-around playmaker. Speaking of playmaker, she is Jackson in the second half taking over. It's past 5 o'clock, but she still cashed in with the bank shot. Still a tight game in that fourth quarter. Ashcraft doing all she can. Airplane takes off, side steps, and lands in a three from deep. Jackson had 22 on the night. She catches in the final blow with this three to send the rubbers packing 48 to 37 and advance to the second round. Here's Coach Graff after the win. You want to survive in advance, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's not pretty, but a lot of times, you know, the pretty games are the ones that you figure out what's what's inside. You know you're going to play them. You, you find out you're going to play them. You really are like, it's a double-edged sword. You, you're kind of happy that you're familiar with them, but then also knowing each other so well can sometimes make it a little tougher. That is a young bunch that's going to be back for sure next year, but I am thankful to get the win right now. All right, a few of the teams are moving on to the next round of the playoffs. From what we saw tonight, how are we all feeling about what we've seen so far? Well, since I am new to the area, I can most definitely say I have enjoyed the atmospheres of every gym I've stepped in. But Carol has caught my eye, especially after upsetting Wasman, which I did not see coming at all. But from what I saw tonight from the Lady Rams, the freshmen and sophomore players coming up will be a force to be reckoned with. You got that right. You know what I'm talking about, Richard? You know I got a statue down there, right? <laughs> all right, we'll get on that another day. But think, uh, just to think about the players, the players, they know how important this part of the season is. And I mean, it's a very tough and very very emotional, especially if you're a senior, just knowing your last ride and your last time wearing that jersey is coming up, even if you win it all. Well, talking about time, that's our time in sports. Jesse Davis, Ayanna Brana, and the Jeremy Bryant. A final look at your forecast. You're watching NBC 10 News at 10. Finally, the seven-day forecast shows 40s for highs tomorrow after we get the last of the rain out of here over the next few hours. 50s on Sunday, 60s Monday, Tuesday, 70s Wednesday, Thursday. So obviously quite the warming trend over the next week. We're just kind of hitting the reset button on temperatures and then we'll start all over again with winds back out of the south next week. One big takeaway outside of the rain chances over the next few hours. Not a lot over the next week. We'll stay dry, a little breezy at times again tomorrow and Sunday and then perhaps ahead of the front Wednesday, Thursday of next week. And that's NBC 10 News at 6. As always, you can visit our website, myarchlimits.com, for more news. We'll see you right back here for NBC 10 News at 10 tonight.